Okay, so the topic of today are spheres, the, the spheres of ecology. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, well, let's look at the geosphere first. The geo, geosphere is really defined as the Earth itself. You know, you look at the diagram, you can see the various layers of the Earth itself. So the geosphere being the rocks and the minerals, uh, the magma, the lava, you know, flowing from volcanoes, the landforms that we see, the, the continents, the seafloor, uh, everything below Earth's surface, you know, this is what makes up our geosphere. So the geosphere is constantly being reshaped. You may know that the, the, the crust of the Earth is broken into these various plates. If you've heard of plate tectonics before, and the plates are bumping and rubbing and moving all the time, causing earthquakes. So the geosphere is constantly being reshaped. And so if you've heard of Pangaea before, Pangaea is this large land mass of all the, uh, the supercontinents here about 250 million years ago. But because the Earth is constantly being reshaped over the years, the continents are dividing and separating. Here we are 145 million years ago. And here we are present day. So the continents as we see them today, I mean, that's what our Earth, our geosphere looks like today, but it's still in motion as the Earth continues, continually changes and reshapes itself. Also, the geosphere is shaped by natural processes such as erosion. You know, wind blowing can cause erosion. Rainwater can cause erosion. The Grand Canyon, you know, wasn't always so grand. Uh, it's been carved by the actions of erosion, by the actions of the Colorado River going through it. So these are factors that can shape the geosphere. And within the geosphere, nutrients are released by organisms and nutrients are stored and used by life. You know, you see the tree roots in these pictures here, in this picture. And so the roots will of course absorb nutrients that are stored in the soil. And once the nutrients are in the plants, then the nutrients get into living things by moving up the food chain. You know, animals that eat uh, the seeds that this tree produces and then uh, carnivores will come along and eat the herbivores. And so nutrients are released and stored within the geosphere as well. Well, if we look at the next sphere, the, the atmosphere, um, the layer of gases that, that surround the planet. And if you look at this picture right here, here are some of the gases that are in Earth's atmosphere. And these gases are gonna be used to build nutrients that living organisms might need. Notice the carbon dioxide. Well, that carbon dioxide is used during photosynthesis to build glucose, which is an energy molecule that we all need, uh, a nutrient. Uh, H2O, the water, is also taken in during photosynthesis and is used uh, by plants and other autotrophs to build glucose. The N2, the nitrogen that's in the atmosphere, you know, this is taken in and, uh, and, and used to make DNA, the nitrogen-based building blocks, the ATCG, adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanines. These are nitrogen bases where the nitrogen comes from the N2 that's in the sky. And so don't forget, there's also just oxygen, O2, that, that is used to breathe uh, you know, in respiration. And so breathable oxygen, so these gases that are part of the atmosphere are used to build nutrients uh, in, in living organisms. So if we summarize photosynthesis really quick, you know, there's really three main ingredients of photosynthesis, sunlight, carbon dioxide from the sky, and water. Those three ingredients will be used by autotrophs, autotrophs like plants, and then through the process of photosynthesis, glucose or the molecule, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens, glucose and oxygen waste are released into the atmosphere. The glucose is used by the, the, the plant itself uh, for energy needs. Okay, so let's move on to the next sphere, the, the hydrosphere. This is defined as all the waters on Earth's surface. So when we look at this picture here and it, it looks like a, probably a, a generalized picture you've seen before of the water cycle. You know, you've heard the expression, what goes up, must come down. So water will cycle through uh, through the planet. 
uh, and, and making up what we call the hydrosphere. And so if we're looking at the water on the surface of the planet, we're talking about, of course, the oceans, the seas. We're talking about the ice, the frozen ice at the poles. We're talking about groundwater, the water that's under the ground that a lot of people uh, use for drinking water. We're talking about, you know, the moisture in, this, in the sky, the clouds. All of this makes up the hydrosphere. And as water cycles from the sky to the ground, to the oceans, back up to the sky, to the ground, to the oceans, as water cycles, of course, it's used by all life for a variety of cellular needs. Earlier, we mentioned that water is one of the main ingredients of uh, during photosynthesis. And so water will be used during photosynthesis to help create glucose. Uh, and that's how autotrophs produce their, their, their food. If we move on, move on to the next sphere, the biosphere. This is the portion of the Earth where we find life. What I want to stress is this is not the entire, this is not the entire planet. Uh, this is a small, uh, thin slice of of the planet, of the crust, particularly. If we look at this picture right here, you get a good idea of the biosphere. Most life is found in this red region right here, about 6,000 uh, 6, meters above sea level and about 500 meters below sea level. That's where we find all, uh, I'm sorry, that's where we find most living things on Earth. Now that's not the entire biosphere. The, the world record holder for the, uh, for the uh, for altitude is this vulture right here that uh, if you look on the scale, I think uh, has been spotted in flight uh, 10,000 meters, about 10,000 meters above sea level, which is amazing. And in terms of depth, it's this little microscopic organism, benthic uh, foraminifera, which have been found, I believe, in, in the Mariana Trench, the deepest trench in the ocean. But this is the entire biosphere from the top end of the vulture to the bottom end of the benthic foraminifera, although most life lives in that shaded red area right there. But that's where we find life. This is what we call the biosphere. And we, uh, we remind ourselves that nutrients can be obtained from the other spheres. For instance, when we look at this formula here for photosynthesis, the carbon dioxide comes from the atmosphere, from the sky. The water used during photosynthesis, that comes from the hydrosphere. Plants, of course, then do photosynthesis and they make sugar, uh, but the light, the light comes from outer space, okay? Uh, the sugar that they create during photosynthesis, that, that sugar enters into the biosphere because it's available for other organisms to consume. And the oxygen that is released during photosynthesis, well, that's released into the atmosphere. So we start to see, I hope, how all these spheres are kind of interconnected with one another. And if we look at a process called cellular respiration, you might not be too familiar with cellular respiration yet, but this is the process where cells make their energy that they need to perform their daily actions. And notice how it begins with a molecule of glucose. Well, that comes from the biosphere. Um, an autotroph, a plant probably made that molecule of glucose. And so now look at the next part, the six O2s, the oxygen that came from the atmosphere. And then through the process of cellular respiration, notice six molecules of water are created. Well, that water enters into the biosphere. The carbon dioxide, that is, enters into the atmosphere. You know, we exhale carbon dioxide waste into the sky, into the atmosphere. And then the energy that's created during cellular respiration, that enters into the biosphere. So again, I hope you start to see how all these spheres are kind of connected and related to one another. And so water, again, we said earlier, water is often obtained, uh, water is obtained from the hydrosphere. And so water being one of the key components of life on earth, we see how the hydrosphere with water is connected to, for instance, the biosphere, uh, but the other spheres as well. But just to point out water, because it is so fundamental to all life on Earth. Okay, so here's a quick little review of some of the things we talked about. I hope you can subscribe down below. That actually does help. Uh, if you're in my biology class, you know, try these questions. I'm happy to check your answers before class or after class one day. So thanks for watching.